Well, pain on my baby, hard times may be The thin that you need sometimes, things break down The reason fixes, gonna find a way, we'll find a way the support of the uh you know your siblings also mm -hmm. um in and i you don't have to answer this but uh you're around what 25 yeah 25 yep 25 okay you know it's 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 you know it may might it may be rude to ask somebody you know somewhere else but on the card is going to sit there and say yep. you know mahila you know what are you five one uh five three five three okay i was off too much you know it's going to give your age it's even going to give you your weight, but you can always lie about your weight. Well, actually, you can't even do that anymore because they got to weigh you in. Yeah. <laughs> it's always like, hey, can you just give me like a half a pound, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, so, uh, you know, that's really cool that your uh, siblings now, did they ever sit there and uh, try to bully you as a, as a kid? No, I was always like, they would dress me up. They really liked WWE, so I would always have like, they would mess with like my shirt so it looked like I had cutoffs on as a little kid they put little pigtails on me like I was like the dress-up doll for my sisters and then they would have me make like like flexing down type motions just to get <laughs> pictures of it and videos so they they were just great sisters I had great memories with my sisters when they when I would ever I'd hang out with them when I was younger like I was just that dress-up doll it was fun no, oh, then that's really good. Now, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> I mean, yes, I'm always doing a, a podcast with fighters and things like that. And very seldom do I ever actually even get into any fights. And it's very strange, you know, you're like, oh, you know, you're doing a podcast about fight. It's not really about fighting with me. It's, mm -hmm. it's for people that want to get into martial arts that either think that one, they're too old, um, too overweight, you know, like me, myself, I'm six, five, uh, right now I'm four fifty. Um, at one point in time, you know, I'm disabled cause I broke my neck, broke four vertebrae in it and went paralyzed from neck down. And then I was able to get the surgery and everything went back. Uh, so this podcast is really to help people because my biggest thing is self-defense. Mm -hmm you know um but what a better way to sit there and talk about self-defense by people that actually learn something and then actually use it correct mm -hmm. you know so <clears throat> let's just get into like how do you look at a, a viewpoint of martial arts as take away being a fighter as self-defense as a woman as you know younger person uh the world ain't getting any you know less crazy you know, and my thing is too, is people's like, well, you, if you're taking martial arts, you're learning violence. No, if you're learning to fight, okay, let's, we can sit there and say you're learning it for violence. Right. But if you're learning it for self-defense, you're learning it to stop violence. Mm -hmm. So what is your view on people that maybe, you know, want to get into martial arts and, uh, you know, things like that and your viewpoint on self-defense? I, my biggest thing is always just to tell people when they want to get into martial arts and they, you know, if they are nervous about whether they're in shape or whatever it may be, especially when they want to go in it for self-defense, my reminder is always the first thing to remember when you're going in there is the biggest thing to learn. And the biggest takeaway is the one who's most aware is in charge. So as long as you're going in there, willing to learn and willing to be that student, a lot of your self-defense is being aware. Like, yes, there's obviously physical things that can get you out of situations, but ultimately, depending on how aware you are, sometimes you can avoid the situations as a whole. And me expressing that to even like my coworkers, um, it's got them into self-defense because they realize that, you know, I'm coming in, I'm willing to be a student. I'm essentially really learning how to be more aware of my surroundings, but also learn techniques in case worst case scenario, something happens. Um, but just to be as open as you possibly can, because it's a, as much as people say going into martial arts, martial arts schools is a judgment free zone. Obviously that's not always how we feel as humans. We always feel judged. Um, so as I always encourage people to pick that goal, focus on that goal, learn to be the most aware um, and focus on that. And what you learn is just aiding that specific concept. And it's, it's 
push people into uncomfortable situations and going into schools and, and learning even basic techniques. I mean, it's, they're simple things, but um, I think martial arts and learning self-defense teaches you confidence, really helps you feel better. So it's, it's that goal setting. I'm all about goal setting. And then that's good that you brought out uh, the confidence. Yeah, there's a lot of things that, you know, when it comes to self-defense and learning self-defense, it's not always about learning to break bones or, you know, uh, in the fight. It's actually one is not even to get into the fight, Mm -hmm. you know, two, you know, you're not there to win the fight. You're there to get away, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, as a woman, uh, you know, and I know that you know self defense and I've watched you fight. So I actually, you know, uh, can see your skill set. You know, your your goal, like if somebody my size was to attack you, is not to win the fight. What is the goal actually for? It's to do anything possible to have a chance to get away. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And that's the same thing with uh, anybody, women, uh, men, children that actually go to like seminars for self defense, you know. <laughs> I've never heard anybody sit there and say, well, this is what you're going to have to do to win, to win the fight. No, this is what you're going to have to do to get away. You know, these are when they show you techniques, it's to be able to get away, especially a lot with uh, women's uh, self-defense uh, seminars and things like that. It's not sit there to go toe to toe with somebody. It's to be able to get up and get away. And the same thing with children. You know, it's the goal for kids to be able to get away, not sit there and try to fight a grown person, yeah. correct? Yep, that's correct. Um, <laughs> you know, so, you know, like with your, uh, with your karate and stuff like that, are you still active in your, your karate goals or is it you're more focused in your training is more towards uh, MMA? Are you still doing uh, karate or are you doing both or are you put one kind of like off to the side for a little bit? Yeah. So I no longer train under my, um, martial arts instructor. We had just parted ways. Um, so I'm no longer moving towards getting my ranks in my style, but the style was broken down by, it really is. It was created by somebody who was, um, a psych, a psych major. So it has to do a lot with mental and emotional. And then also just talking about your physical like concepts and abilities, So all of the concepts and everything that I learned from that style, it's rolled over into MMA for me. So there's no way that I could ever let go of that training. Um, And then when I coach, because I do like one-on-ones with people who want to learn like just basic self-defense. I coach my fiance for his striking. And as much as he wants to like do really bulky combos, I'm a sucker for just sitting there and doing the basics and talking about the why, why are you making all this extra movement? There's no need. You want it to be so crisp. And I granted you watch my videos, you'll see me throw a haymaker from my hip. You know, adrenaline does crazy things to your technique. So I'll throw myself under the bus for that. Um, But then I look at my own fights and I'm like, why did I do that? Where did that technique go? How can I change my camp? and adjust my striking to get that basic technique that even under stress, it still looks crisp and clean and the way that it should. So even though I'm not actively going towards my ranks, I can't look at fighting any other way than the concepts that I've learned from my style. Like they're embedded in my head. And the only way like I function is like every action, there's a why and every reaction, there's a why that It was something that you didn't choose because reactions are not our choices. They're just, you know, you get slapped in the face, you get mad, like it's a reaction. Whereas like you get slapped in the face, you take a second and say, why did you slap me in the face? What's going on? That was random. So that's how I process all of my MMA and my full contact stuff now is just how I've grown up understanding it. You know, and that's uh, in in everything you said. There's 100. percent You can't pick and say, "Oh, well, that's wrong." I mean, that's really, and it's it's really cool that I think the way that uh, you sit there and brought up how your style was broken down. Mm-hmm. You know, um, like the karate that I was taking was uh, Shudokan, which is up in Washington uh, uh, under Morris Mack. 
you know, uh, and his, his style of karate is more for self-defense, you know, uh, yes, they have their tournament fighting and things like that. And even my, my, uh, sensei was, you know, a tournament fighter. And then I broke off from her and I went to her husband, totally two different styles. I mean, they both know the same style, but totally, totally different classes. Mm -hmm. You know, hers were more uh, hooked on katas, Mm -hmm. you know, and you barely ever, you know, done any sparring. You know, his is katas good, but I'm, I'd rather show you how to sit there and do actual self-defense. Now, how do you look at that? um, How did you convert your karate into self-defense? And how did it convert like you said, you know, throwing a haymaker from your hip, that's, that's a, you know, that's actually a karate thing, right? Mm -hmm. How how did you sit there and, you know, take that and mold it in to actual self-defense? And uh, obviously, whatever you've done, it has worked, you know, because like I said, people, even the one fight that I've seen her, you could tell that she was a karate person. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know that she was a karate person until I was watching you fight. And then I went and asked Matt, you know, the owner of uh, Arena Wars. He goes, yeah, she's she's a karate person. And I was like, oh, okay, you can definitely see that. So how was that conversion into those things? And if you can give anybody advice that wants to get into self-defense, what kind? what should they look for when it comes to a dojo or a style? You know, like I said, the wife that I went to, totally different than the husband, same style, just totally two different things. So, like, how did you convert those things into ways that you can use for self-defense and ways that you can use in a cage? And what should somebody look for if they want to get into self-defense? Yeah. Um, so the actual so the name of the style is Wing Dao, and it means essentially formless way or no form way. And that name itself just means that the way you're going to throw a straight punch is going to be different than how I throw a straight punch. It's okay. And it makes sense. We have very different backgrounds, different knowledge, different experiences, different height, everything. So it's, there's not one way that's correct. There's basic technique that you teach somebody, but they're always going to be slightly different. And that's some of, and the reason I say that is that's how it's transitioned for me for self-defense and for, um, going into MMA kickboxing. When I was growing up doing sport karate, all of the same concepts that I've learned are universal. Um, you just explain them very, you explain it different depending on essentially what you're talking about, whether it's self-defense or whatever it may be. Um, but I like talking about that when it comes to self-defense, because somebody might like the idea of learning, I hate saying it, but like brute force self-defense compared to that passive self-defense and recommending someone to go into a dojo to learn self-defense. It really is seeking where you feel comfortable, especially with that instructor, as well as the environment that you walk into. Um, No longer being with my karate instructor. I mean, I've been with under that instructor for a very long time. Um, I was also in other martial arts schools. I've had great instructors, but I've also walked into places that I'm like, it's just a weird, um, egotistical vibe. And I'm not a confrontational person. Yes, I fight, but that egotistical vibe, I'm that person who's like, you know, we can probably find a different environment that's more friendly. Um, so just recommending going to a place that you're comfortable and that what they're teaching is what you're actually interested in learning. And that's more of like a a self-discovery type thing. Like, are you actually wanting to learn how to do that hard style, you know, Japanese block that really is force against force? Or are you looking for, you know, more of like a redirecting approach, that more passive redirection, whether you choose to strike or not, just very different um, approach to self-defense. That's my biggest advice. No, and that's, that's actually really good advice. You know, that's like um, me personally, my martial arts, and I've been around like martial arts for like over 30 years, but it wasn't up until like five or six years ago that I started getting in, actually went into a dojo, you know, and actually started going up, you know, rank wise and things like that. Um, 
me being disabled, you know, um, having a family and things like that, when it comes to my self-defense, I can't play around mm -hmm. <laughs> with certain things, you know. Um, it's not that I, it's like I said before, def self-defense is not being violent. And it's also, like you said, you choose what you want to do. And I never want to be violent. I just want to be able to walk home at the end of the day. You know, and with having different, um, you know, martial artists on here, like uh, John Heckelman that uh, trained um, Chuck Liddell and, you know, other guys like that, his outlook, you know, don't let anybody steal your lunch money. That Hawaiian style of uh, Kempo, he says, listen, this is for 100% self-defense. I, he goes, it's meant to be brutal, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the thing <laughs> in my, uh, my uh, sensei, she always sit there and said, listen, you're a big guy, you know, you don't have to, you know, go as crazy as like a smaller person. I said, that's not what I want. And she goes, you know, and you also have to know the difference. Like if you're walking down the street and a drunk person comes up, he goes, she goes, you don't have to break his leg, break his arm, throw him down on the ground, you know, and she goes, you don't have to do that. And I always thought it was funny because I'm a stay at home dad and I would do a lot of the daytime classes, you know, so I can be at home at nighttime cooking dinner and things like that. <clears throat> yes, I'm the I'm the uh, wife of the family. <clears throat> Even me and my wife joke about that all the time, it, <laughs> <laughs> but it works for us. You know, it would be so funny. She would be over there with like a 12 year old because they'd done a lot of the uh, homeschooling mm -hmm. uh, teaching during the day. And she'd be over there with like a 12 year old. She'd be like, okay, what you want to do is you want to break their neck and lay them down slowly because there's no need to hurt them anymore. <laughs> When she was teaching the self-defense side, it was just hilarious. You know, she's like, you know, if you have to break their hand, you know, don't be, you know, you don't have to be mean afterwards. <laughs> you know, and I thought it was funny. So people, when you're looking to find uh, something for self-defense, yes, you know, look what you want to do. It's the same thing with people that want to have concealed gun permits. Do you want to carry a little 22 or do you want to carry a Desert Eagle? You know, <laughs> it's, it, you know. Yes, it's 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 the same thing as self defense. Do you want to be that twenty two where you mm -hmm. I'm away, or do you want to be that Desert Eagle, you know, Hulk smash kind of thing, you know? So uh, yes, I really uh, appreciate your uh, your outlook on self defense. So <clears throat> the three questions usually the first one's a little bit longer and it's a little bit more you know in depth. So let's get to question number. <laughs> let's get to question number two. You're the first uh, podcast of the year. I've, I've taken a I've taken a couple uh, months off. I just done a whole bunch of podcasts at one time, and then just you know I had like four four months to put one out every week already ahead before <laughs> I even even started the podcast. So let's get to question number two. <clears throat> what is martial arts doing in your life right now? What are you doing with it? And also one thing before too, I wanted to ask you. You sit there and said that you want to help uh, your work the people you work with, you know, uh, get into self-defense and martial arts. <clears throat> you don't have to say where you're working, but what kind of work you're in. I would, uh, I would love it if you was like worked at a manager as a builder bear or something, but please, what, what kind of work do you do? I I'm actually our, I'm human resources for a veterinary clinic for small animals. Um, I work for a corporate, um, but I am HR, which it was a joke when I met all the other HR reps and they were like, oh, I garden for fun. And I'm like, <laughs> so I do MMA and I fight. That's what I do outside of work. <laughs> so like there is that like stereotype of like HR is not the like they even crack the joke. If they're not the most exciting people, I was like, well, this is what I do. <laughs> no, that's hilarious. So like an HR person they're like yeah you know I, I like to garden hey I'm on a bowling league you know like what do you do uh I I put gloves on and I uh yeah. fight you know for 15 minutes or so yeah. now um like I said let's go ahead and get into what is it doing in you now are you up on the pro circuit yet or are you still considered an amateur how many uh MMA fights have you had or have you done like MMA Muay Thai you know kickboxing like what all are you just sticking with MMA or are you kind of like, um, when I first got into doing full contact, I did a kickboxing fight. Um, kickboxing is just not as big in the Northwest. Mm -hmm. Um, 
that at least that I've learned, it's definitely more of an East coast type thing. Um, and then once I did that kickbox, if I had a real, like in a perfect world, I would love kickboxing. I feel like my career longevity wise, very different. It's not as physically, not demanding, but like you don't get as like your joints don't hurt as bad. Um, yeah. But. And you I don't think, have to get up off the ground. <laughs> yes. Or crank, like your elbows not getting cranked, knees, whatever it may be. Um, you know, I actually uh, hate to interrupt you, but like, I was like, you know what, I'm going to start doing uh, jujitsu and I went to do it a few times and I, and you know, my MMA coach that I go to over here and I just go to train. I don't, I'm never going to fight in a cage, you know? And he's like, well, let's, uh, you know, during the jujitsu time I'm, and he's like, well, let's uh, warm up and they're doing, and I'm like, no, I'll go over and do a bunch of yoga <laughs> if you want. But no, if I do that roll, I'm going to roll on out the door and get in, <laughs> get in the car because <laughs> everything's going to hurt afterwards. You know, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry for interrupting you about uh, the kickboxing. No worries. Um, I so when I learned that kickboxing really wasn't a big thing in the Northwest, I was like, okay, what's what else can we do? And I'm like, MMA, which my coach at the time was like, I I don't know. Like, you're in college, you're finishing up college, like, or I think I still have like a year or so of college left. And he was like, how about we reevaluate a little bit further into your term? Let's have this conversation. Come back to me in a couple months. And I'm like. Okay, cool. So I started putting in more work and I came back and I'm like, you know, we should do MMA. It was great. It's challenging mentally, emotionally, physically, like this is a great idea. And then eventually I had roped him into finally letting me do an MMA fight, which turned out great. My MMA debut was great. Um, and then I had, I think three, yeah, three MMA fights. And then I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Three MMA fights. My second one was a title fight for FCFF. My third fight I did lose. I lost via arm bar. Um, and then I took a, a break. That's when my coach and I went separate ways. Um, and then I did a kickboxing fight after that. Cause I had shoulder surgery as well. So I was like, how can I get myself back into this without going into MMA and have the potential of somebody cranking on a shoulder? Crazy. I fought nine months after shoulder surgery. Um, so I did kickboxing. It was stiff. That was weird. I've never had an injury like that before. Um, kind of sat me down to be like, okay, let's put some focus on your career at the moment because injuries can happen. Um, but gave more of a push. I was like, man, I'm going to come back. I really want this. So I'm going to take care of this. Completely listen to what I was told to do. Trusted my physical therapist. And I wasn't, they didn't want me to go back as fast as I did. But I was like, listen, if I could pass your test, I can go back. And I was past their motion that they wanted. I was able to do everything that they wanted. I was able to go back. I was lifting heavier than I did before having shoulder surgery. So I was like, we're good to go. Um, so then I did a kickboxing fight only to literally just get me back into the swing of in the training, doing a fight camp. And then immediately went, went back into MMA. And that's when I fought. Courtney was like mid year last year. Um, and then I had another fight in October. So I had three fights last year. Okay. No, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's not bad. I mean, three fights. I mean, it's I always, uh, hate it when you sit there and you hear fighters. Oh yeah. I had, you know, 14 fights last year. Dude, that's, that's, you know, you're not even training. You're just fighting, going to the gym, working out and then having another fight, you know? So that kind of sucks. <clears throat> Did you do any of the uh, Muay Thai circuits or anything, or was that not your, not your thing for that? No, I've never done Muay Thai. The stance is just a little different. Um, Cause of your karate background. Yeah. You get used to that. Yeah. So it's just a little different. That's why kickboxing was an easier transition for me. Um, kickboxing, even like I have friends who do kickboxing, who've transitioned from karate, but they really like engulfed that Muay Thai aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just, it hasn't, I didn't find that like mesh with my stance. So I just kept going the kickboxing route. Okay. Now you sit there and said before that you've done, you know, tournaments and stuff. Now, how, how far did your tournaments go out? I mean, was it United States wise or did you go to like Canada, Mexico, or how was your, how was that journey? 
Yeah. Um, we went to Canada a lot um, just because of living in Washington. It was a yeah. pretty easy drive for us. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's probably closer than coming down to the bottom of Oregon. Yeah. And a lot of our tournaments, um, people would come from international, whether it was like Ireland or things like that. Um, there is a tournament in Ireland. I never went to that one more. So we always went to tournaments that people came to the United okay. States, which was nice. Um, but we did go to Canada a lot. I've never been to Mexico. Um, but my karate tournaments took me all over the United States. Like most of me growing up, like I was traveling from the age of like 13, I feel like I was traveling like every month. My parents worked with my teachers to make sure my homework, I had it. I was able to stay up with all my schoolwork, but we were constantly traveling uh, just one tournament to the next um, and obviously training in between. So got to travel a lot, but karate took me to a lot of different states, a lot of cool cities, yeah. really small cities at times. which had a lot of history, which was cool. Um, but karate, tra like traveling for karate was probably like the best memories of me growing up through martial arts. So, yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Um, I know that your husband actually has, is, or your fiance, correct? Yeah, I marry married him okay. in July of this year, actually. Oh, wow. So he will oh, be wow. my husband this year. Okay. Okay. Well, future... Very close future husband. We'll just say yeah. that then, right? Uh, he's he's fighting uh, January the 28th here in Springfield, yes. Oregon, correct? Um, yep. I can actually pretty much just walk out my front door and <laughs> throw a rock and hit the hit the arena where he's fighting. Um, you're not fighting there, I guess? No, just coaching him there. Okay. Did you not want to fight or is it because, you know, oh, I got to worry about him. He's got to worry about me. It'd just be too much, you know, worrying for actually the fights. I, so my goal, I really, we're dabbling and seeing, like, we're dabbling to see if we can go pro. We have had some contact with some federations. Um, that's, you know, my little four-year-old dream and goal. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm dabbling in that direction, which is why I didn't take a fight. They did offer me a fight in January, um, to fight on the same card as him, yeah. but that it was more of like, we're going to see where this direction goes. Cause you know, there always is that chance that you take that one more fight and then, and then get an injury. And then that pro debut can't necessarily happen. Yeah. You know, if it were to happen in a couple months from now. Um, so that's where the focus was on his camp is like, we're mm. in that conversation. So this can, and it gives me more time to, do, you know, I've signed up for, I have a jujitsu competition this weekend. Okay. So we are really like hammering down on wrestling, jujitsu, just really dialing everything in, getting that okay. structure from my camps while I'm focusing on his camp so we can prep for, you know, what the future holds for my yeah. fighting career. And is that his goal too, is to go as a pro fighter? I think so. This is his MMA debut. Oh, really? So okay. I know that's, that's what he said. And I, obviously I would hope that's what it is. Um, but this is his MMA debut. So at the same time, some like, you know, I've, I've known people who do their MMA debut and they're like, you know, maybe he wants to do kickboxing instead. Yeah. So it just kind of depends yeah. on what he wants to do. Um, yeah. But I know he loves fighting. Now, what is, um, uh, do you know what, who he's fighting uh, in uh, next month or this month? I think his name is Chris Taron. Okay. If I, I can remember don't... correctly. Yeah, that I don't know. I know that uh, our gym has like four fighters fighting that night too. So, um, you know, that's going to be interesting. And then, um, you know, debut MMA, it's always got to be a little bit hard, right? So uh, here out of the gym, we have um, uh, Dalton Swanson. Uh, he became um, Oregon's first uh, kickboxing champion with um, Arena Wars. And uh, he's actually having his MMA debut at King of the Cage. Oh. And I'm like, that's got to be like so much pressure, dude. You know, you're like, you know, because it's not even if, you know, King of the Cage is as big as it used to be. But the thing is, is UFC, King of the Cage over that span of time, you know, mm -hmm. and you want to do your MMA, you know, debut uh, at King of the Cage. I think it's hilarious, you know, and confusing. But I, I sponsor him anyway, so <laughs> I'm, I'm behind him 100%. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, is there any hints of the people that you're, uh, you know, thinking, you know, having your debut uh, as a pro fighter with? I mean, can you say who you're looking to go for? 
Um, I, I'm hoping it's for LFA. I'm okay. hoping for that. Um, there's, you know, arena wars as well. I fought for them and they do have pro fights as well. So yep. it's just kind of seeing what direction or Good. not what direction, but what opportunity is there and just, you know, trust in the process. Yep. Don't, you know, don't rush it, you know, because if it's going to, um, if you want that longevity, you know, you, you know, like I had, um, uh, a UFC fighter on here, uh, Justin, I forget his last name. You know, he said, uh, he had like 80 amateur fights before he went pro. <laughs> like, why? So he goes like, he goes, if there's a fight, you know, one day and there's a fight two days, I would take it, you know, uh, no notice, you know, just, you know, taking fights. I'm like, man, that's gotta be rough on your body. Um, so that's really cool that you're doing that. Um, have you ever thought about like, um, I know, especially since you're a karate person, first of all, what is your, uh, here, my brain's gone all splatter ADD. Hey, everybody. <laughs> what is, uh, what is your record in MMA? It's four and one. Oh, wow. Very good. That's, that's really awesome. Uh, how many, what was like your roundage? Like, you know, um, was it first round, second round? Like what was your average? Uh, on? I've for my MMA, I've knocked out. So three of them have ended in knockout. The only two that didn't, one went the distance, all five rounds. That was my second fight when I fought for the title for FCFF. That went all five rounds. Um, I fought a, a girl named Jordan and man, I remember just sitting there and I was punching her as many times as I could. Somebody made a comment on one of the posts that said I threw everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> my arms were so dead, that adrenaline, I was so excited. I literally threw a ridiculous amount of punches. Thankfully there was conditioning. They were still going. Um <laughs> But she just kept standing there. And I'm like, man, I can't get her to go out. Like, I just remember that going through my head. Like, how are you still standing? Um, and then my other time that it didn't go, it didn't end. Um, and it went was when I lost. I lost via arm bar. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the only other one. But other than that, they've all ended in knockouts. My fight with Courtney, though, went all five rounds. And it was yeah. a legitimate buzzer beater. Yep. No, that right there was a little it. card, like the little paper that said my time. I got that. <laughs> yeah, man, we were time, almost all the distance. Yeah, no, that was a, that was an all out uh, fight during that whole that whole yeah. five rounds. That was definitely. I mean, and it was what the last fight before the end. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, uh, on the podcast I did with her, you know, she was sitting there, you know, talking about going to the airport the next day to fly out. And then she's like, I got my hat down. I got my glasses on. I got my hoodie, you know, because I, I always thought it was like, <clears throat> Let me ask you a question, especially as a female and you're walking with bigger dudes that are fighters anyways, like her husband and her trainer. I said, said, how does that look? And it was just funny. Matter of fact, there's a, uh, everybody, uh, there's a, uh, the short round short where I'll just take a little minute clip from a podcast to put it up where me and her is talking about that. It's actually hilarious. Uh, now you brought up, um, that you uh was doing um jujitsu matches and things like that here lately uh how's that going for you it's going great um i i did one i think a couple weeks ago that went great great turnout um i won every match except for one which you know that happens you don't win them all um learning opportunities from that um and then I just, it's, it's fun getting to learn, getting expand your knowledge, getting more comfortable in uncomfortable situations is the biggest yeah. thing. Um, yeah. There's just foreign things to me and it's just getting comfortable with those has been a learning process, but it's been really good. And that's even what, uh, you know, like uh, the people that want to learn self-defense, you know, that's, that's being, you know, comfortable in uncomfortable positions, you know, somebody punching in the face, nobody wants that. But if you've never been punching in the face and you're really, you know, trying to get out of a situation i'd rather be punched in the face a few times and know how it feels um now uh have you ever thought about going into like karate combat or something like that especially with your karate background you know i i love watching the karate combat videos absolutely love them um i don't know if i would just because i really like uh, to me like getting to getting to learn what I'm learning for MMA is allowing me to be that like all around best martial artist that I feel like I can be. It's pushing so many limits that I, mm -hmm. like I wasn't obviously pushing at certain times doing sport karate. 
Um, I really like learning jujitsu and the wrestling aspect and just getting to really learn new techniques, but also tighten up a lot of those techniques as well. So I'm not, I would never be opposed. Granted, I love my karate background. Absolutely love it. Um, but currently that one track mind is, is MMA and just really wanting to become the best martial artist I can be in, in my view, um, Mm -hmm. which is just, you know, being mentally and emotionally strong, but also physically being in that, just that, that place. Yeah. Um, actually I, I know quite a few of the guys over there, karate combat, and most of them all have been MMA fighters at some Mm -hmm. point, you know, um, uh, the only one I don't think really was that much of an MMA fighter was um, Gabriel Vaga. I think he mm-hmm. was mostly just kickboxing, even with uh, Glory or um, Bellator and things mm-hmm. like that. Uh, but majority of all the other ones have all been, you know, uh, MMA at some point in time. But uh, no, that you know, that might be one of those things later on down the road when you don't want to, you know, I'm going to say you're going to go pro. Ladies and gentlemen, she's going to go pro. I, I can, I'll put it out there, especially if she's uh, definitely, you know, brushing up and, you know, drilling that uh, wrestling and jujitsu in your head. She's got the hands and she's got the, you know, the feet. So that's going to be no problem. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, she's going to go pro. Mahila. Let me get that name out there and get it right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Or I say it wrong, and then, you know, you do make it big, and then somebody's watching this, and they're like, look, this stupid idiot didn't even get her name right. Uh, Either way. All right. So, boom, second question down. Uh, Third question is really probably even the shortest one on here. Uh, What is your plans for martial arts in the future? Um, One second. I just have to close. My door popped open. So just one second. (laughs) There we go. I saw it open. <laughs> All right. So um, I'll just say it again. So uh, third question, uh, what is your plans for martial arts in the future? Um, the plan is to go pro, have that pro career. I The, the ultimate goal is, d- besides being like, you know, a champion and a professional federation, obviously that's another goal. I crack the jug to my fiance all the time and to... Um, a couple of my coaches, I'm going to be a double champ. And if it means that I get to be, you know, the first women's triple champ, Hey, you never know. The possibilities are endless. Um, but the goal is to ultimate goal is to be able to have my own gym. Mm -hmm. Um, that's like, you know, when you're ready to like, but not retire, but you can even be like, obviously midway through your career, but I want to be able to have my own gym and be able to, you know, have that environment. That's so welcoming. Um, to everybody and be able to really incorporate some of that karate background, that dojo feeling yep. into having a like MMA gym. Yeah. I mean, actually you can, I mean, really you can almost even do both in it. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, do your, you know, uh, cause I mean, if, as a fourth degree black belt, you're definitely qualified to even teach karate. I mean, mm-hmm. so that's no big deal. Um, I mean, heck, even a majority of fighters now have their own, uh, their own gyms, you know, and uh, teaching or, they're fighting and teaching at the same time. Like um, uh, Bruno that fights in karate combat. He was also in the UFC. Uh, he trains at, uh, he's a teacher at uh, Machida uh, hmm. in California. Matter of fact, it's a, it's, it's kind of an interesting story. Like uh, he grew up as a little kid and has his whole life has been with uh, La Chita. So his karate is like on point because you know, he showed him ever since he was a kid. So yeah, his karate is pretty good. Uh, yeah. So you can definitely do something like that. Any other plans other than that? I mean, do you want to be a world famous, uh, you know, painter or something? I mean, I don't know. No, I, I just, I love that childhood dream is to be able to teach martial arts. Um, I I have my career, but that ultimate dream and that want is to be able to share my knowledge and also be able to share, you know, a lot of my morals and what I value as a martial artist, like having that respect, um, whether it's to not whether who it's to just to everybody, but, um, feeling comfortable in yourself and not, cause I I do feel like there's at times where like, you know, sometimes you gotta run your mouth to get places (laughs) as well. 
Um, and it's completely not in my character. So I also yeah. want people to be like, you know, you can be successful by putting in the work, showcasing your skills yeah. without having to change you for yeah. the field that you're going into. No, that's just like my wife. She's been in um, early childhood development with kids, um, either physically or sexually abused. Uh, I could never do her job, but she's amazing at what she does. And she's the same way. She does, you know, she's not yelling at anybody. She never does that. Uh, now she's a director. She's been a director of different places for a couple of different years. But, you know, uh, she went into a new place and she's the uh, director and she got a lot of blowback from some of the people there. And she also brought a couple different people with her. Like when she, when she switched jobs, you know, she had like three other people like, Oh, wherever you're going, I'm going with you. She's had one girl that's uh, three different places where they worked. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, the ladies are like, uh, where she's at, they're like, well, I know she's end up going to be, you know, a mean person here. This can't be real, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, uh, she's going to, we're going to be able to make her, you know, fit into our, our ways. And, you know, my wife's like, is it in the laws? <laughs> All right. Uh, are we, are we going to get fined for what we're doing? If yes, you're not doing it. And I'm never going to change my mind on it, you know? And then one of the girls I worked with her and she goes, listen, what you see is what you're getting. She's never going to change. <laughs> you know, she'll be very, you know, like there's this one lady, she wanted to hang lights in her room. You know, uh, these are uh, kids with um, disabilities and things. She goes, I don't care if you hang lights in your room, just don't hang 50,000 lights. And the girl's like, she, you know, all she heard was no lights. She didn't hear less lights. Mm -hmm. you know? So she, I can understand, you know, you actually being from an HR kind of person, you know, she's kind of the same way. So um, <clears throat> also before we go, do you do any hobbies? What do you do? when you're just trying to relax? I'm not the best person trying to relax. I won't lie. Um, I'm a very busy body. Um, okay. So, I mean, like the gym for me is fun. So that's one of the things we do. I love running. Um, and but... it's good that your future husband is also a uh, gym you know, I've tried to get my wife a couple of times. Yeah, I've tried yeah, to get my wife a couple of times to, uh, she, she tried karate with me. Uh, she gets uh, anxiety when it comes to kind of testing and stuff. So she can't do that. I got her into Muay Thai and she really was actually good at it. She just doesn't have time. She's a, she's a workaholic. You know, uh, her last job, the reason why she left was she was working almost 80 hours a week. She's working seven days a week, pretty much 24 hours a day. She was always on call. So, yeah, she's like, that's one of the reasons why she left. But, uh, no, that's that's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, you, you're. it sounds like you'd be a really cool HR person. So that's really cool, you know. But um, I think uh, I think we've learned a lot from Mahala. I know. I just wanted to throw that out. <laughs> I had, to, I had to pretend to have a Freudian slip in there, but uh, no, um, <clears throat> I really uh, hope you do great in your for, uh, future pro career. Um, what I've seen, I, I I don't think you have a doubt in that. What weight class are you in? Phantom weight. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, you're, you're definitely going to be good. Uh, <clears throat> it's nice to say that I already have a future champion on a matter of fact, I've had a couple different future champions. Like, so everybody that I've had that like karate combat that wanted to be boom has became a champion. Uh, my buddy from uh, the PFL boom, he became champion this year, million dollar prize. So uh, yeah, I, I have a pretty good record on people that want to be uh, champions, become a champion. So, you know, polish and rub your little head from it. <laughs> so listen, before I let you go, please, uh, let everybody know where they could uh, reach you, see your videos, you know, give your whole Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah. Um, you my, my Instagram is, I always think I always put the <laughs> underscore in the wrong place, but it's fight underscore hard MK. It's my Instagram. Um, a lot of my videos, you can just Google my name and they will pop up. Um, some are not on there. Some of them are on like Facebook because people have shared them. They've like live streamed them. Um, but the most active platform that I'm on is, is Instagram. Okay. And it's uh, Mahila 
Kaler or Keller? Keller. Keller. Yep. Okay. All right. I was sitting there saying, man, wouldn't it be a cool name to be like a fighter and had the last name Keller? That's why my, my nickname, my fighting name is Mahila the Killer Monkey Keller. It runs straight into my last name. The monkey? <laughs> yep. The Killer Monkey Keller. Now, hold on. Uh, how did you get the name the monkey? Um, my previous coach. So when I was a teenager growing up, um, we'd play like tactics and strategies when I did my sport karate and I used to like swing my arms for some reason. Like, we cracked the joke, the sport karate people don't put their hands up. I would swing my arms and he called me a, you know, it was like a monkey thing. And that's what we called that strategy is, you know, doing the monkey. Um, and then we had to make it a little meaner for MMA and killer went really well with Keller. So like I have my hoodie on, um, one of the dudes from our jujitsu school has a hard to kill jujitsu. So he made a hoodie and it has a killer on this side and then monkey on the other. And then it has like a crazy looking monkey on the middle <laughs> holding like a lion's head and a snake's head. Um, yeah, why not? So <laughs> it ran really well with my first and last name. <laughs> no, that is great. Uh, so I'm going to let you go here. Um, hopefully I will have you on again if you if you would like to be on. Yeah, I hope absolutely. You had fun. I don't. I don't know. You know, sometimes people I ask them if they had fun, and they say yeah, but I don't believe them all the time. <laughs> you know, but not actually. Let's say everybody's like, hey, yeah, get get back and hold of me. 